So let me take this opportunity to welcome you, my friend Patrick, and uh, your uh, colleagues, Susan. Uh, nice to see you again. Uh, it is it is actually humbling to to all all the time just to have you around. And uh, also, I want to say thank you very much for Moses. I think Moses, you've done uh, a very good uh, 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 analysis from what I saw, and and and, and uh, also I think uh, your 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 machine is not giving you problems as as we had some other time. And also, Mercy, I can see you there. I think you're ready with the questions. And uh, wh one of the things is that uh, I wanted just to uh, to to share with you. Uh, uh, so, some of the things that uh, we, we, we do understand relative to what actually Masi has, uh, has, has actually asked here. So Masi is asking if, if at all the, the, the Book of Mormon is, is actually, you know, talking about uh, genealogy and also if, if, if at all we can read just from one of the prophets of the Book of Mormon today and see the kind of insights that we can, we can learn this morning. Uh, before we proceed on anything. And as you are asking that, Marcy, I, I thought about uh, one, of the, one, of the, one of the writers in the Book of Mormon, and his name was called Jerome, a very interesting writer in the Book of Mormon. So that is, that is where we want to dwell in, and he's giving us reasons as to why he's writing. And I think Jerome was not uh, a prophet per se, but he's, he was one of the, like you can say, a member of the church, who had a serious testimony, and uh, 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 he also wanted to share his 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 testimony to the to the world on what he feels that uh, it is right and what he feels that it is very understandable. And this was about three and when he was writing these words, it was about three three ninety nine to three sixty one BC. For those who are, who are good at timelines and those who are good at actually, you know, analyzing timelines. So this was around about 399 to 361 BC. So that is when uh, Jerome was writing these words. So I will just begin from the uh, chapter headings that is in the book of Jerome chapter 1. And the book of Jerome for our viewers... Uh, this one is actually not in the Bible, it is actually in the Book of Mormon. It is one of the books, uh, one of the prophets that wrote within the Book of Mormon. So his name was called Jarom, and he's also ascending his testimony uh, to the world relative to what other prophets in the Book of Mormon actually wrote. Uh, and this is what he says. Eh? I will read from the chapter headings, and this is what it says. The Nephites keep the law of Moses, for Jarom was a Nephite also forward to the coming of Christ and prosper in the land. Many prophets labor to keep the people in the way of truth. Okay, so that is exactly the work of the prophets. They always ensure that people are brought back to truth. Okay, uh, if, if a society or if the church goes astray, now the Lord will always send a prophet to ensure uh, that uh, they, they, they are actually brought back to the ways in which our Heavenly Father wants him to be. So in verse 1 it says, Now behold, I, Jerome, write a few words according to the commandments of my father Enos. Okay, Jerome was, was a son to Enos. And uh, for those who understand who Enos was, you can actually refer to uh, the other discussion that we had some other time. And he continues and says, that our genealogy may be kept. Okay, so he says the purpose as to why he's writing, I write a few words according to the commandments of my father Enos, that our genealogy may be kept. And as these plates are small, and as these things are written, for the intent of the benefit of our brethren, the Lamanites, wherefore it must needs be that I write a little, but I shall not write the things of my prophesying, nor of my revelations. For what could I write more than my fathers have written? For have not they revealed the plan of salvation? I say unto you, yea, and this sufficeth me. Okay? And behold, it is expedient that much should be done among these people. 
because of the hardness of their hearts and the deafness of their ears and the blindness of their minds and the stiffness of their necks. Nevertheless, God is exceedingly merciful unto them and has not as ye swept them off from the face of the land. And there are many among us who have many revelations, for they are not all stiff-necked. And as many as are not stiff-necked and have faith, have communion with the Holy Spirit, which maketh manifest unto the children of men according to their faith. And now behold, two hundred years had passed away, and the people of Nephi had works strong in the land. They observed to keep the law of Moses, and the Sabbath day, holy unto the Lord. And they profaned not, neither did they blaspheme, and the laws of the land were exceedingly strict. And they were scattered upon much of the face of the land, and the Lamanites also, and they were exceedingly more numerous than were they of the Nephites. And they loved murder, and would drink uh, uh, the blood of beasts. Yeah, that is what the Lamanites used to do. And it came to pass uh, that they came many times against us. So the Nephites to battle. But our kings and our leaders were mighty men uh, in the faith of the Lord, and they taught the people the ways of the Lord. Wherefore we withstood the Lamanites and swept them away out of our lands and began to fortify our cities or whatsoever place of our inheritance. And we multiplied exceedingly and spread upon the face of the land and became exceedingly rich in gold and in silver and in precious things and in fine workmanship of wood in buildings and in machinery and also in iron and copper and brass and steel, making all manner of tools of every kind to till the ground and weapons of war, yeah, the sharp pointed arrow and the quiver and the dart and the juvenile, the javelin and all preparations for war. And thus being prepared to meet the Lamanites, they did not prosper against us, but the word of the Lord was ver verified, which he spake unto our father, saying, that inasmuch as ye will keep my commandments, ye shall prosper in the land. And it came to pass that the prophets of the Lord did threaten the people of Nephi according to the word of God, that if they did not keep the commandments but should fall in transgression, they should be destroyed from off the face of the land. Wherefore, the prophets and the priests and the teachers did labor diligently, exhorting with all long suffering the people to diligence teachings, the law, and teachings, teaching the law of Moses and the intent for which it was given, persuading them to look forward unto the Messiah and believe in him to come as though he already was. And after this manner did they teach them. And it came to pass that by so doing they kept them from being destroyed upon the face of the land. For they did prick their hearts with the word, continually stirring them up unto repentance. And it came to pass that 230 and 80 years had passed away after the man of wars and contentions and dissensions for the space of much of the time. And I, Jerome, do not write more, for the plates are small. But behold, my brethren, ye can go to the other plates of Nephi, for behold, upon them, the records of our wars are engraven according to the writings of the kings or those which they caused to be written. And I deliver these plates into the hands of my son Omni, that they may be kept according to the commandments of my father. So this is, this is a testimony of Jerom, who was the son of Nephi, not, not the son of Nephi, the son of uh, Enos, and, and, and Jerom was, was an Nephite. And he's actually attesting and giving his testimony to what exactly transpired according to the teachings that the prophets actually taught during those days and according also to how the Lord actually used to bring back his people when they were, they, were, they had actually gone astray, okay? 
Now, one thing got me thinking, and especially to those who may have concern about the Book of Mormon, and uh, many people will criticize the Book of Mormon, and uh, they will speak a lot of things about the Book of Mormon. And from the writings and from the readings that we've just read, you end up realizing that these prophets spoke nothing, okay? They spoke nothing save only Jesus Christ and his teachings and his gospel. And this is what they used to lead their people actually to focus on the will of God. And, and, and Jerome is actually explaining it very well here, okay, how the prophets used to do and how how the church was actually exhorted to be more diligent in keeping the commandments. And you realize one thing is that the teachers of that day, they were exhorting people to be diligent because it is a promise that the Lord had promised them that he will bless them if they hearken unto his teachings, if they follow his commandments. But if they don't, then definitely they will not actually be hires of the promise. And it is exactly the way it is and the way it was in the days of, 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 of the children of Israel. Okay? The Lord will always give them commandments. And if they stray, what happens? The Lord will send a prophet to bring them back to line. And if they actually stray and they do not keep the commandments, then they will not actually realize the blessings and the presence of God in their lives. And this is the same, same pattern. And, 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 uh, and even in the days of the prophet Joseph Smith, you realize the Lord gave the prophet Joseph Smith a, a revelation. And, and, and he told him that if ye do what I say, I, the Lord, am bound. Okay? But if ye do not do what I, the Lord, have said, then ye have no promise, ye have no promise. So the pattern is always the same. The pattern has always been the same. Now, one of the greatest things that also we can learn uh, from, from the Nephites, uh, especially relative to what uh, Jerome has, has actually testified, is that they were so much concerned, first of all, when they were writing, they wrote so that their genealogies okay, will not actually fade away. Their genealogies will not be forgotten. That is one of the key things, and I think that is the reason as to why most of the prophets of those days were commanded to write so that these principles may not actually depart from their genealogy. And, and, and not, nobody puts it better like the prophet Nephi. Okay? Nephi says, we write of Christ, we speak of Christ, so that our generations may come okay, and know where to seek uh, repentance for the remissions of their sins. So this is a skill that was supposed to be imparted to their generation and their understanding of what life is, knowing very well that their forefathers had a certain relationship with deity and it is the same, same relationship that they needed their children also to have. And this is what uh, we are being told, that my people perish for the lack of knowledge. This is what the Lord spoke through uh, the prophet of Sire that people perish because of the lack of knowledge. Okay, when the knowledge of God is no longer in the presence of the children of men, and the only thing there is that the children of men will perish. And you, 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 there is a clear history about that, both uh, in the Bible and, and even in the Book of Mormon. There is always a clear indication of what befell those who rebelled against the word of God and those who do not want maybe to keep uh, you know the word of God. And I know Susan uh, and, and Mercy, you, you will agree with me that uh, the world we are living in and especially um, I'm always worried especially when I look at things at times, I look at the kind of world we are living in now. I'm always worried as a, as a parent. I'm always worried for my children. You know, like uh, what kind of world are they really going to to, 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 to have? You know, because looking at the way things are really changing and the way people are perceiving things differently. And the good thing about it is that when you are in the scriptures and you read the scriptures, you will end up realizing everything that happens in this world, it's not new. Okay? Everything that happens in this world, it's not new. Everything that happens in this world, it happened in a certain generation. And then you can see how the Lord dealt with that generation. Okay? 
the things that used to happen in the days of Noah, the things that used to happen in Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, the things that used to happen in the days of Abraham, you know, uh, and the things that used to happen even in the days of the apostle uh, Paul, okay, you realize that uh, every generation, and it is a replica of things, there is nothing new uh, in this planet Earth or in this mortal life, okay, there is nothing new. Okay, the only difference or the only new thing is that the names will keep on changing, but the spirit is always the same. That spirit, that event, that evil will always be the same. Okay, will always be the same. And that is why the prophet uh, Spencer W. Kimball at one time he said that there is no new sin in mortality. There is no new sin because the sins that we see today. These sins actually existed uh, in the life before even our generation. And what, what uh, is the only difference is, the only difference is that maybe the names will change. Okay? The names of these things will change. But the same, same event, the same, same, you know, wickedness, it is actually the same. And it is the same because the author of the same wickedness is the same spirit that spirit that actually came from the fall that spirit that uh, brought confusion in in sodom and gomorrah uh, the same spirit that brought confusion in the days of noah uh, that same same spirit also brought confusion in the older church the ancient church okay brought confusion to the elder, ancient church and when and when you read some of the teachings of the apostles you realize that they are condemning things that existed during their time and the very very things now in our lifetime we are able to see what exactly is happening now for example when you read the book of romans chapter 8 okay uh, from verse 1 you look at the things that paul was condemning during those days okay these are the very very things that they are being actually advocated today and even i'm wondering some people now are taking those things as a right and if you kind of like try to perverse or speak otherwise of what they they, 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 they they feel it is right for them, you are even risked risking to go to court. They will take you to court. And they are very powerful people. You know, they are very powerful people who can take you to court. Okay? Now you both will agree with me that family values are being compromised. Okay? In the world today family values are being compromised. There's a confusion to an extent that you cannot even define who you are. Right from the birth, right from birth, you reach a level whereby you start now, other people will start telling you that now you have a right to do A, B, C, D, or you have a right to define yourself as A, B, C, D. And these are the very, very things that Paul was actually condemning in the days of, of, of Rome, when you read the book of Romans. Okay, these are the very, very things that Paul was condemning. And these are the very, very things. They happened in Rome. Uh, they happened in Ephesus. They happened in Corinth. They happened uh, uh, even in Jerusalem itself. Okay? So these are the very things. So the greatest advantage for those who are converted into reading their scriptures, one of the greatest advantage is that you will be equipped with this knowledge to understand that nothing is new in this mortality. Nothing is new, okay? Nothing is new. And the greatest thing is that when we immerse ourselves into the scriptures, it is that we are going to receive a nice roadmap of our life, knowing that whatever experience, whatever event, whatever challenge that comes, one thing you should know, that those challenges are not new. They happened sometimes back. And how do we deal with those challenges? We can learn from the people who went through those challenges and how did they overcome? Okay? How did they overcome? Now that is where now we can take the experience and apply them even today. Apply them even today. And that is the major essence of the scriptures. And that is why Jerome is saying here that we are writing so that our generations may not be forgotten. That their generations may know like how their forefathers actually lived, okay? The principles and what they valued as, 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 as their forefathers, what they valued the most. And then they will strive even to keep that legacy of their forefathers, knowing very well that those who are actually against or 
they were not living according to what heavenly father required of them okay there was always punishment that heavenly father used to give them and the secret is that if you live according to the principles that heavenly father wants you to then definitely there is always a blessing that he will shower you with and not only you but he will shower even up to the fourth generations of your life knowing very well that they are actually a righteous seed and they are keeping the principles that heavenly father requ requires of them so that is the major essence of, of us actually reading the scriptures the major essence of us actually understanding the will of god in those scriptures okay the understanding the will of god and the will of god has been revealed uh, through these scriptures okay and even though there's always a modern revelation that the prophets will always be there to guide us and lead us and also help us to understand okay to understand the the the, 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 the you know the the what the lord requires of us okay what the lord requires of us so that is the major essence as to why we need prophets today and that is the major essence as to why we will need a church that is being led by his prophet and and and, and Christ is the cornerstone or the head of the of the church Christ is he is the one that gives revelations to the entire church and that church must be on earth today that church must be on earth today nobody should tell you that there is no true church there is always a true church and no one should be discouraged from going to church simply because they've seen some weaknesses of certain individuals weaknesses are there even prophets have their own weaknesses there was one time the prophet joseph smith was asked a question and he was asked, like, is a prophet always a prophet? Okay? And the prophet answered it very interestingly. And he said, a prophet is only a prophet when the Spirit of God is with him. Okay? When the Spirit of God is always with him. But this prophet, in his home, he is a father. Okay? To his children, uh, to, to his children, he's a father. You know? To, to his wife, he's a husband. You know? He can be also a friend to his friends. But when the Spirit of God constantly continues to be with him, that is when his prophecy actually stands. In other words, without Christ, okay, without Christ and without the Spirit of, of Christ, then we forget about, you know, prophets. So a prophet is always a prophet when he has the Spirit of, of Christ in him. That is what it is. You know, that is what it is. So to my dear brothers and sisters, especially uh, Susan and Marcy and, and Moses and, and, and Patrick, I, I would like just to encourage us that we constantly continue uh, to read the scriptures. And even as you are investigating the church, okay, even as you are investigating the church, okay, I will urge you just, you continue to read your scriptures and, and, and be prayerful, okay, be prayerful. Okay, at times uh, I, 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 I always tell people that don't be like, you know, those reprobates who will only want to argue for the sake of arguing. But in actual sense, is that they are not letting the Spirit to actually guide them in the things they speak. And one thing is that in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we take words very seriously. And that is why you will never find a brother in the church just speaking carelessly, you know. You can never find a sister in the church who speaks just carelessly. Because the Lord is very, very, very particular in the words we speak. And you remember the scriptures we are being told that we shall give an account of every idle word we speak. Okay? Every idle word we speak. And that's why at times I bleed for some of my brothers and sisters who may not understand the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You find somebody just says anything about the church, you know? Just says anything without even, you know, seeking to understand the wisdom of God behind it. Okay, when you speak like that, ask yourself, has the Spirit revealed to you for you to say what you're saying? Okay, has the Lord actually given you a revelation for you to speak what you're speaking? You know, have you, have you actually counseled with Him for you to have received what you are actually talking about? Or it is just self-proclaimed hatred towards, you know, members of the church. 
Okay? And if you have the spirit of Christ in you, then you should have the spirit of love in you. Okay? Why will you hate? Why should you hate people who have not done any you know, harm to you? Them is just to hold on their faith. They keep on holding on their faith and they are prideful of what they believe in and they are always willing to share what they believe in. Okay? And then that one becomes so resentful to you you feel hated about it. Why don't you also share? Okay, share what you believe. But one thing I know, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints are very loving people and are very proud people and they always want to share what they believe in. They always want to share what they believe in. Like as of me, for me to come online like this, I, I did not just decide to come online simply because people are, are, are online. No. Okay, it's because of the spirit that compelled me. Okay, compelled me, and he told me, Look here, you need to speak, you need to share these things so that your friends, your brothers and sisters, you know, my good friends like Patrick, Moses, and, and, and Susan, okay, when you see me sharing this, then you will know exactly this is what you know, Brother Gabriel Mira believes in. This is what Brother Gabriel really values a lot, and I value my faith. I value my church and I value the teachings and the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is life to me. That is life to me. And I remember one time I shared with you that when I totally had nothing to hold on to, all that was left for me was just the gospel. This gospel was the only thing that was pushing me in life. Okay? This gospel that was the only thing that was pushing me in life. It is so sad that I schooled with some of my friends right from high school. They are friends that I used to have in high school. They are those that I used to have also in primary. They are those that we were in college together, you know, uh, college together. And at times, that, uh, at times when you start following up with them, you will be told very sad stories that, oh, brother so-and-so, he gave up in life and he decided to take away his life. Or you hear, ah, your friend, sometimes when I go home, back home and I, I try to, you know, talk to people, you'll be told, oh, your friend, so-and-so, so-and-so is no longer there. He passed away two, three weeks ago. When you ask what was the problem, you'll be told, oh, he went somewhere and, you know, uh, people killed him. Or he, 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 he got himself into a problem and, and he decided because he, he, he could not know, he could not actually, he didn't know what to do. So what he decided, he just decided to take poison and he committed suicide and killed himself. And these are the things that do happen. Okay, these are the things that do happen. When somebody is empty in his life, there's always two things they will go to for solutions. One, it is either they go seek witchcraft, which is very rampant, Especially people will go for witchcraft uh, to find jobs. Others will go seek for witchcraft for their businesses to prosper. Some of them even will take funny things into their own homes just for prosperity. But at the end of it, all those things end up turning against them. That is one solution when somebody is empty without the gospel. They will go for those things. The second solution for empty people is to commit suicide. Because they give up so easily and they find that the only option is actually to take away their lives. And these are some of the things that are very, very serious. And that is where the gospel of Jesus Christ comes in. Because there is always hope in the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is always hope. Even if you are going to what? Christ will always give you hope. The Spirit will always administer to you. Even if your friends leave you even if the world does not want you. But the Spirit of God will always be there with you. Because remember he said that I shall not leave you as orphans. Okay? But I will send you the Comforter who will always be with you. And that is the work of the Comforter. To guide you and to comfort you when things are tough. He is there always to give you a reason to move forward and to handle and to ensure you push forward and keep on keeping on. You press on. Okay? You keep on pressing on. 
that is the good thing that is the best and the best thing about the gospel of Jesus Christ because we have a comforter who will always guide us and who will always teach us and who will always comfort us in the things that we are going through and I've experienced this I'm not I'm not saying this because it's just it's a tradition that every Christian has to speak this no these are things that I've experienced them I have experienced them for myself I I know it is there and I know it is true and many a times when when I face challenges I always feel it I just feel it you know at times uh, sometimes back I used to speak to I used to talk to one of my friends that uh, we we almost just uh, joined the church together and, and and we you know we joined the church together and one time uh, we were talking about like how do we feel uh having seen ourselves as members of the church for quite some time and this friend of mine told me look here there's a big difference that i see most of the time and i asked him what is the difference and he says that nowadays when i pray i don't pray like the way i used to pray you know those days when i used to pray i used to pray to a being that did not exist to me i didn't know where that being was so the only thing is that i thought that shouting loud and praying aloud maybe they will hear me you know and that is what he used to see members of his church then were doing you know they will pray so loud you know pray so loud uh, pray so loud you know so one time when he, he was actually contemplating about it and he had a prompting to him and that prompting uh, told him that uh, i am always here with you you know i'm always here with you even before you start speaking any word i always know the desires of your heart that experience changed the way he prays changed the way he prays and he told me brother gabriel when i pray i when i pray even the moment i begin to pray i always feel like he's here with me that i can touch him i always see and i feel him that he's around here and that is the beauty about the gospel of jesus christ that is the beauty about this restored gospel that you pray by revelation you pray with understanding no you pray with understanding you don't just pray without knowing who you are praying to and then somebody will come and tell you i've given a very powerful prayer there is nothing like powerful prayer there is nothing like powerful prayer but there is a prayer to a powerful god now that is the difference between how latter day saints pray and how other churches or those so called other groups how they pray i'm only i'm not trying to demean nor am i trying trying to undermine uh, other churches no but that is how i pray because i've been there i know what is, what happens there okay they pray to a being that they they do not know that is why they shout so much they shout so much you know when 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 somebody is far away from you and you want them to hear you what do you do you shout and that is what exactly happens to our brothers outside here because you are not sure if this person is hearing you you are not sure if this person can hear you so what do you do you shout thinking that god is a person that will pay attention to your noise but simply those are just noise my brothers and sisters having all these instruments of music in your churches and you play them to an extent that you make noise even to the neighborhood and you think you're praying you're praising god that is no praising god that is no praising god let me just be blunt with you people hmm? that is not praising god when you praise the lord you praise him by revelation you praise him by revelation you praise him knowing who he is and that is why in the context of mount carmel when elijah contested with the prophets of baal what happened the prophets of baal made a lot of noise and even they inflicted themselves in pain until they were even bleeding 
And what did Elijah tell them? He told them, you need to shout more. Maybe your God is still sleeping. Shout more. But when Elijah's turn came, Elijah did not even finish a prayer. Because he prayed by revelation. He did not even finish a prayer. Before he even uttered, so Jehovah, let thy name be vindicated upon these people. Immediately fire came from out. Fire came from above. And in fact, those meats, he told them, pour more water in those meats. And they poured water. And fire came and consumed those sacrifices. That is what prayer is, my brothers and sisters. That is what prayer. And that one I've learned it from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Where prayer is given by revelation. People know who they are worshipping. They know. They know who they are worshipping. They understand Heavenly Father very well. Some of us have had these experiences. Glad tidings are brought to you by the Spirit. At times the Spirit will guide you in the ways that are very, very great. You know, you have those experiences. And, and at times when you are just in the verge of just giving up, you feel the comforter comes and he comforts you. And he gives you a reason to push on. That is it. That is it, my brothers and sisters. That is why I always speak of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, irrespective of what people will say, because I know this is where I felt the experiences of God in my life. This is where I have felt the Spirit. This is where I found the Spirit of God. And this is where I was actually endowed and gifted. You know, I was confirmed and given the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is the place. This is where I knew the truth. Mercy. This is, this, is, this is where it is. You know, prayer, you don't just shout. Just like the way I'm talking to you here. You know, I'm not shouting, but I'm talking to you, Mercy, Patrick, and, and, and Moses. You know, Susan too. Yeah, just like the way I'm talking to you, I know you are listening to me. And that is what prayer is. There is nothing like a powerful prayer. But there is a prayer to a powerful God. And the only secret is for you to know who you are worshipping. Once you have that revelation, then the rest, leave it to him. And that is what many churches are lacking. They are lacking because they do not understand who they are worshipping. They do not understand. They don't know him. They don't know him. They are just, you know, copycats and building traditions which are not even biblical yet they profess to be you know believing in the bible but they are doing things that are even against the bible and then somebody will come and tell you that they are worshiping the true god the rest here are actually not worshiping the true god it is so strange and some of them when you tell them now tell me what do you understand who is god what is the nature of god the only thing they will tell you is a spirit and then when you ask them, who are you? They will tell you, I'm a mortal human being. But they don't understand they are spirit children of our Heavenly Father. You are a spirit having a mortal experience. You are with Him before you were born here on earth. And I think uh, I explained that very well in the, in the other video. Okay? So these are some of the things that I always tell people. That the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is actually a church that is being led by revelation. It's a church that the Spirit of God moves. And members will always feel that Spirit if only they hearken unto what the Lord has spoken. Relative to what we've read from the book of Jaro. That the church then were being led by the Spirit of God if only they hearken unto what Heavenly Father required of them. But if they went against it, then they will not have, a, they will not have any promise from our Heavenly Father. And that is what it is, my brothers and sisters. And I know Mercy, Paul, and, and uh, Mercy, Patrick, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and Susan, uh, Moses, uh, when you follow the truth, the truth will always be with you. And I know in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we actually are partakers of this truth. We are partakers of this truth. And, and I will not actually tire to testify to you that this is the true church that the Lord has restored 
in our times today. This is the true church that has the priesthood of God. And this is the true church that understands what ordinances are. Okay? They understand what ordinances are. And this is by revelation. This is by revelation. Some of you, you know, sometimes you think when Elijah was contesting with the prophets of Baal in Mount Carmel, and he told the prophets of Baal, you guys need to pour water on those meats. You know, they didn't know that Elijah was performing an ordinance. Because you go through baptism first, and then that is when you receive the baptism of fire. That was a confirmation, and that is why he told them, this sacrifice, yes, pour water. And those guys just poured water. They didn't know what Elijah was doing. And then when Elijah prayed, those sacrifices were actually consumed by fire. And that is what happens when you go through baptism. After baptism, we are actually to receive the baptism of fire. And that is the Holy Ghost. And that baptism can only come by performing that ordinance by the right authority. By the right authority. And that's why the prophets of Baal will pray all over because they did not have a revelation on anything to do what they didn't understand. They shouted from morning almost to evening. But because they had no authority, they had no revelation, nothing happened. Hmm? Nothing happened. And that's why outside there, people will tell you fast. Even at times, it's very funny. I think you heard the story of Shakahola. You know, people are taken even to the forest to fast and only to realize that somebody is, is doing something against them. You know, somebody is doing something against them, which is strange. Why? Because my people perish because of the lack of knowledge. These things are very simple. And Heavenly Father has actually brought it to us in simplicity. Okay, it is so simple that when you look at it this way, you'll be like, ah, is this even real? But that is what it is. Because him being God, if he had come to us in a more complicated way, we will not actually be able even to bear it. Okay, he brought it so simple to us. He was born even in a manger from the glories of, all the way from the glories came and born born in a manger and that is how the gospel of Jesus Christ is it comes in its simplicity and those who have the spirit of humility okay they are humble like babies they will be able to receive it and they will be able to comprehend the ways of God it is not complex but it is men who are trying to make this gospel so complex just that a, a, a simple verse like from the book of Jerome from what we've read somebody will come and complicate it complicate it telling you that he is the one that has the spirit simply because he wants to exercise authority over you so that you are always subject to him you cannot question when you question he will tell you these things require the spirit so he is the one that has the spirit only you people the rest of the congregation does not have the spirit and once he has controlled you, then what happens? It's a booming business for him. It's a booming business for him. Hmm? Tomorrow when he tells you now we have this, you need to contribute, you bring. You even forget to pay school fees for your child, but you have to bring something to your pastor because your pastor said it. I tell you, people are really in bondage outside here. People are really in bondage outside here. And the gospel of Jesus Christ is here to set us free. It is here to set us free, and we are going to be free indeed once you have the gospel of Jesus Christ in you. And I know that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is a restored church, and it is his church, that church, that he told Peter, upon this rock I will build my church. And this is his church today, that he has restored all the truth, he has restored all the priesthood necessary for us to receive any ordinances that will require us to be saved. Any saving ordinances that the Lord required of us, those saving ordinances are performed in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I know this church is true, and I know that the Lord reveals his truth to his prophets. And we have a living prophet today, even Russell M. Nelson, who was a qualified medical doctor, 
Go read his history. You see what he has contributed in the medical world. Eh? Some of you say, some of you sometimes think that those who receive the gospel are not all that educated. That they are, so one time I heard somebody saying that, you know, these people who are so much into the gospel, they are not all that educated. These are people who are only hiding themselves in the gospel. But in terms of knowledge, they do not have knowledge. My friend, Russell M. Nelson, who is the prophet of the church, he's a doctor, medical doctor. Okay? He's a medical doctor. And he has performed, you know, a neurosurgeon. Hmm? He's a neurosurgeon. And he's performed. You go, you, you, you find his history. He, he's there. Go to, in the, medical, in the medical world, they recognize him. In the U.S., he participated in the revolution of the medical, medical, medical sector. There are a lot of things that he came up with. And he discovered a lot of things. He participated. And those things, when you ask him, you read from his biography, he will tell you it is all about the Spirit of God. That the Lord actually led him to do those things. And this is a man, when he stands, all doctors will listen to him. Anyone that professes to be a medical doctor, neurosurgeon, this is a man he's, who is well recognized. And he's a prophet of God today. So don't tell us that uh, at, at, at Christians or maybe gospel believers are never educated. No. Those ones that you see them there, in fact, the Lord cherishes knowledge. And he says he glories in the knowledge, in intelligence. And one of the greatest revelations that was ever given in the church through the prophet Joseph Smith, is that the Lord admonished the saints to acquire as much knowledge as they can here on earth. Be the best. Having the Spirit of God, acquire as much knowledge as you can here on earth. Because that knowledge would be beneficial for you in the world to come. Because the only thing that we can take with us from this earth is the knowledge that we acquire. And that is why the prophet was admonished. Tell the saints to acquire as much knowledge as they can. And that's why when you go to the U.S. right now, you find the smartest people in whatever sector, even in governments, you'll find they're members of this church. Members of this church. The smartest people. You look at family setup, that traditional family setup, it is only upheld by the members of the church. Okay? Only upheld by the members of the church. And the mortality rate, they live longer. Like our prophet is about 90, 98 years old now. But when you look at him, he's very strong. Very, very strong. Do you know why? Because of the secret of the word of wisdom. A law, that law of health. Okay? Because of that law of health. There are people, when I show you now, if they are 98, you look at them today. They don't even talk. Lifespan today, nowadays, if somebody is just even clocking 70, unless he was an ancient, uh, uh, he was an ancient, uh, uh, those traditional fathers, traditional uh, people like my forefathers and my, my, my father then, you know, these were traditional people. And they never used actually to eat the kind of foods that we are eating now. These were people who are keeping the word of wisdom, but at times we don't understand. But you look at their history, their way of life, okay? You realize these were really keepers of the word of wisdom. They were not taking a lot of alcohol. They were not eating a lot of meat. You know, these were people who were, every now and then they were working, and that work was exercise to them, uh, you know, and they were eating a lot of herbs, vegetables and grains. That was their food. And that is how they used to live long. But nowadays people eat a lot. They are predators. We have human beings who are predators. They eat meats that they cannot even define. Some of them, even nowadays, we have laboratory-generated meats. Yeah? People eat things that they cannot even understand. Eating poison. And that's why I heard that lifespan, even in Kenya, the lifespan in Kenya, it is actually reducing. Okay? I heard sometimes back from the Kenya Bureau of Statistics that they are projecting lifestyle in Kenya. The lifespan of a Kenyan person would be 65 years old in the years to come which means if somebody reaches 70, it will be a struggle. Why? Because of lifestyle diseases, the way people live. Some people don't even like exercising. You know, people don't like exercising. Okay? They don't like exercising. They eat, 
they eat junk food from work you just eat anything and i think i spoke about that you you can you can check also uh, one of the videos that i spoke about the word of wisdom okay what the lord requires of us and what we need to eat and what we should not actually eat there are things that are well defined okay and this is the reason as to why when we go contrary to the words of god then we become affected and this is what jerome was saying here that if we go contrary to what the lord has revealed then we shall be affected but if we stay in the ways that heavenly father requires of us then we shall always be safe and the blessings of god will always be with us otherwise thank you very much for your time mercy uh, patrick and uh, susan and, and moses i want to say thank you very much this morning and uh as you are also proceeding forth with your work, please have a victorious week and may God bless you. And I always thank you very much for joining us in this podcast. And uh, I'm looking forward even to, to for that day when I will see you actually making covenants with the Heavenly Father in the waters of baptism. Otherwise, thank you very much. And even for those who are listening to us, please remember that we need your support. We need your support and we have a vision and a purpose uh, for this channel. And uh, this channel, basically, we have a vision of actually ensuring that we help the aged in the village. We've realized that the aged in the village are really living a very, uh, they are very living a very deserted life. And we, I found out that uh, there is a way that needs to be done for these elderly people. Uh, and that is why I've come up with this YouTube channel. And guys, I'm only targeting a thousand subscribers. Please, if you can assist me, I get this a thousand subscribers so that I can venture into the vision that I have to help the aged, the elderly who've actually been left in the villages. They don't have anyone to support them. And, and the, this is the reason as to why that uh, any antidotes or any enumerations that we are going to get from this channel, it will be channeled to those elderly people there so that we ensure that their lives are really cushioned very well and they are well taken care of. Otherwise, thank you very much. Please remember to subscribe and hit a thumbs up and, and, and God will bless you. And please keep on supporting us. And for those who have already subscribed, please keep on coming and keep on watching. And we also need to see your comments down there so that you may give us support and also give us necessary insights on how we need to move forward so that we make this channel stronger for our elderly in the villages to be supported. Otherwise, thank you very much and, and God bless you. Thank you and have a very victorious week. I love you all. God bless you. Thank you.